that better? That's that's probably better. <laughs> Shit. Uh, so okay, let me start again. Yep, yep. Uh, let's start again. My name's Henry. Um, I'm the warband leader of Black Cockerels. We are a Sigmarite warband in Ballarat. Um, I had done a little TED talk like this privately um, with a friend about helping them get into Warhammer and helping them figure out where um, they are and where they are, what sort of knowledge they need to know as just like an everyday person in um, the Warhammer Fantasy universe um, in this specific year. So this is my little TED talk. I've prepared a bunch of few things for people to look at. Um, there will be links thrown up in the chat as we're going along. Um, for you watching after the live on the VODs, they'll be in the description or they'll be pinned top comment sort of dealio. Um, yeah, so we've got quite a few things to go over. Um, this stream I'm expecting to take approximately maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Just depends on how long I ramble. <laughs> so, uh, let me start again. Let's thank the people we followed in the past couple of hours, champs, all years. Um, and then let's start with where we are currently in the year. I'm also joined by Grant, another black cockroach. I mentioned that before I realized I was muted. Whoops. Um, uh, I just moved that one around. Um, can't, I'm not going to touch that screen. I'll touch that screen. Anyway. Um, okay, so the current year in Swordcraft in uh, our LARP is the current year in real life. So the year um, 2022. Not This is sort of an era where there is stuff going on, but it's stuff going on that is sort of veiled, really. So let me first link y'all the timeline yeah 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 here so that's popped up in chat so this is the this is the um one i use primarily um the other resources have recently gone down and i have no access to them at all whoops um sorry we are in the year uh 2022 so the current things that are going on in the year in this era the most recent main event this is these are these are main events so we're going to work backwards. So let's let's think about our um, our basic bitch boy character. Um, so our basic bitch boy character, and let me just pull up a sticky note if I have them. Do I have sticky notes? Maybe I don't. Um, just so we can all have an idea, actually. Yeah. Sticky notes, do they stay up above stuff? Uh, yeah, see, Henry's like, yeah, no, don't worry, I'm totally prepared for it. No, I wasn't. I was not prepared. Uh, no, actually, I got rid of the search function on my Windows. I'm currently running, like, a, a half Windows. Um. Oh, no, God, oh, bomb. Anyway, we'll, 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 we'll ignore that. Um, I'll just pull it up on the OBS. I got user by heart a windows user by 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 need void chain eight i hydrated it's coke zero there's no sugar i'll grab a glass of water in a second but thank you um okay let me just add um some, some text Let's go. You are for this for these intents and purposes. You're human. Age. Let's just go. Human. Uh, date of birth. D O T D O B. Uh, let's say. Uh, nineteen ninety. And you come from a different land. But this is essentially the information that we sort of need at the moment is sort of what you are, what our what our character our most basic information, their race, 
and what year they were born. So this is this is the basis for starting out a character and sort of looking at stuff and figuring out. So uh, we're gonna say that we are born from a regular farming family. So currently in Swordcraft, our year is twenty twenty two, the current real life year. Um, uh, the last major thing to happen is uh, Vlad uh, von Karstein, who is from this area in Slovenia. Oh gosh, hang on. Really wish I knew. I really wish I'd put his name on this later. So they are from Slovenia. So in this point in history, Slovenia is attacking. Uh, they just go, they walk all the way up here, they just free pass, they just walk through, and they just start kicking the shit out of Midland. Um, uh, uh, there's rumours about um, uh, some pretty nasty stuff happening um, uh, with the current war that's happening. Um, and essentially, von Karstein, uh, uh, an elect account, I think they're called, an elect account, um, is essentially civil warring within the empire. Um, Sylvania is sort of a separatist state. Think of it sort of like your North Korea-ish. Um, but they they invite people around and they keep things sort of uh, cordial for the most part until recently. So 2014 to 2015, there's a year-long siege in Middenheim. Um, all that you would know as a person hearing word of mouth, Middenheim's being sieged. Peasants and infantry, you everyday farm boys, if they haven't been recruited, they're going to be fleeing. They're going to be fleeing into the, uh, the surrounding borders, probably fleeing into the Reich or... Um, because I actually think he goes through Ostermark, through the Hawk, and into Midland, like this, not straight. I think he actually goes around, so, and then attacks, like, around here. Um, so they will be fleeing, da fleeing down into Reichland, and down into, um, Whistland, Napoli. So, so you would hear, you would know about this one. This is, this is, this is information that, so, the, the principle and the basis for this is being built off is, is... Um, room turning, turning factual lore into rumors, into stuff that you haven't experienced. Okay. So unless you're from there, unless your backstory is you're from there and you came, you fled, you would only hear about it. Um. Currently in the empire. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on, um, and it's, there's a, quite a lot of stuff. Uh, literally 20 years ago, a comet hit the earth, destroyed Mordheim. That's as far as you would know. Okay, so Mordheim's a really big event, a lot of people know about Mordheim, and a lot of people know that Skaven have taken over Mordheim, the comet, the comet was, uh, essentially heralded as a twin tail comet sort of thing, um, and it hit, and, like, almost perceived as like a, a second, like a, a, a sign from Sigma sort of deal. Um, hits Mordheim, which is sort of like the jewel of Ostomar, um, and just fucks the city. The city was massive, um, lots of people die, um, uh, Skaven make it like a base of fucking operations, essentially, <laughs> um, and it sort of starts kicking off this, this war with Vlad von Karstein, um, who then, 10 years later, attacks Ost attacks Ostermark. You would hear that Vlad von Karstein attacks Ostermark and then moves and starts um, moving his troops towards and into Middleland and starting to siege Middleland for a year. Okay? So we turn this into a runner. Ostermark gets blown up. Apparently a comet hit it. Unless you were there. You would just that would all you that would be all you know. You would hear rumors, probably at the tavern, that would be it. Okay. We're reducing down the level 
of knowledge. Straight off the bat. And I'm going to keep reiterating this point. Uh, Chatter. Um, Boy Chade 08. It's interesting looking at the timeline and everything, especially when my character's age. I choose around 1800 for my character's date of birth. I'm one of the elves. Okay. So, elves are interesting um, because you, you have a lot more, you have a lot higher scope. Like, you actually, so, like, you know, you would, things, and this is the tricky thing when it comes to sources like this. This isn't full. Um, 1d4 Chan. We'll just... They're a wealth of fucking knowledge, but they're down at the moment. Um, their timeline is a lot more detailed. I memed a bit more. It's, it's sketchy on the wording that they use. But anyway. Um, how, I, how I primarily look at making characters is I look at how events affect and change cultures in real life. So for elves, um, things like wars... Things like um, event, like events that would shake and shake a small province or continent, would have a longer lasting effect on you, and then would change your cultures, would change your cultures' behavior. So, say like, let's use, and I'm not, I'm not too, I'm not too familiar with elves. But the same principle applies here. So let's let's use a real life setting. World War One. World War One changed warfare from uh, literally not all that long ago. Um, in the uh, Boer Wars, it was still very much line fighting um, with uh, your standard red coating and banging with cannons and all that sort of deal um, to an extent. Um, you know, Boer Wars were still very much seen as a um sign of ah war it's good for a man sort of thing whereas world war one came around and that perception really changed and affected the people who came back and survived and the widows and all that sort of stuff a devastating war you know on a larger scale which is essentially what most wars in warhammer fantasy are they're large scale events that cause devastating effects so these things ripple through generations so you know if you were born during the tail end of something like that like some generations are those things carry over so we're we're we're, we're looking at it like that so world war one so Boer war to world war one things changed a lot and you then also look at socioeconomic stuff and all that sort of things but that's way deeper that's 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 some rabbit hole shit you you can do in your own reading okay um so here's here's a here's a a good couple of things to remember is that um uh a, a, an idea of what era your parents lived in an idea of what were the events and what stories potentially you may have heard heard about um, so you would have an idea of something happening in the past, but you wouldn't know details unless that was a career, which would be something like that would consume a lot of your, uh, sort of younger, like, would consume sort of your younger to early adult life. Let's. Mm. Yeah. So so this is this is a this is a um this is a funny thing. I'll grab you. I'll get to your comment comment in just a second, Boyd. Um, this is a funny thing. Um, things in Warhammer Fantasy have such a longer memory. Um, but it still is sort of to the back of people's minds. So. Currently, we're in an age of despair. So the setting we're in is 2022. The um, the we're in the War of Three. We're in the War of Three Emperors. Um, last one died. He was poisoned by um, the uh, the I think it was Vlad von Karstein and his men. 
all you would know is that the Von all all people would really know is that suddenly a bunch of nobles died really close together. Um, that's it. In law, Vlad von Karstein invited a bunch, a fuck ton of people around and poisoned them. They died. Really important people, including the current emperor. The last current emperor. Um, uh, he, then the, uh, main church, the cult of Sig, the, the, the Grand Theogenist, the head of the cult of Sigma, um, refuses, uh, Margareta of Marienburg's crowning, which then makes everybody go, uh, yo, that's for me, thanks. So, a civil war breaks out. Um, the one to take it in the end, I think, is Yorick Kruger, um, the Midlander. Uh, he, I think he's the fastest to claim, make a claim in a stake to that. Um, so you would, you would hear about that. That's a devastating thing to happen. And that would be something that your parents, as say a villager, uh, a boy would be hearing the townspeople talk about that. And that's going to stick in your memory. Um, you're not going to have an idea of what it's like growing up with the security of a stable, um, uh, monarchy. So that's, that's always something to think about. Um, uh, we'll get to Boy Jade's comment. So it would have an impact on your character having lived through such differences. Uh, so it would have an impact on your character having lived through such major differences over a longer period of time. Worth considering, although for the most of my character's life I was in Ulthuan, the home of the elves, so I would have heard of such things but not necessarily been involved. Yeah, so this is, our current year is a little bit hard when it comes to elves, because they only really start um, showing up more, I think, during this era. Because this is of the time of the voyages of Gundar and all that sort of stuff. Um, if we would know about wood elves, that's about it. Don't go in the forest. They hate you. Um, and you'd see a few floating around. Um, nothing nothing crazy. Um, so yeah, this these are the things that you want to think about. You want to think about A. When you were born, B, what your parents' profession was. That means what sort of social status you lived in. Villager, congratulations, you're bottom of the run. If you're a, a scribe for uh, a cult, congratulations, you're bottom of the run. If you're uh, an orphan, congratulations, you're bottom of the run. Um, if if you were born in any thing, if any period of in any socioeconomic time during uh within swordcrafts um sort of no uh no big sort of son of a noob sort of thing um uh like guidelines you are typically going to be middle class at best at the very best um, the only exceptions to those rules are going to be the merchant princes, uh, the merchants themselves who are selling you shit, uh, and their retainers, their retinue. Um, anybody in, uh, yeah, level one to three. <laughs> so these are, these are all, these are all groundings to, these are all your tricks to click you back to that, to that idea of, of is this going to um, fit an effect within where we currently are and what we're currently doing in the world? It's this is this is a bit of a, a bit of a uh, spiggledy mess, but I, I promise I'm gonna at least connect some lines here and there. Um, so there are going to be things that you will never know about, never ever in your life. In your lifetime, unless within Swordcraft's quest stories, which is the main ones, um, or say, uh, your yeah, within Swordcraft's quests, you wouldn't have ideas of. So, the common folk would have no idea what the fuck a vampire is. You just wouldn't know. There's no way. Why? Because the empire is so very 
very, very serious about keeping that shit under wraps. Because during the Age of Sigma, uh, there was a necromancer and he fucked shit up. He fucked a lot of shit up. And shit was fucked up for a very long time. Um, this is some reading that you can do later on. Um, but I have a nice little document here called The Life of Sigma, which is some nice light reading. I wouldn't suggest reading the whole thing um, all the way through. And take note as well when you are looking at... Uh, this is another aside. This is going to be full of asides, everyone, um, and tangents. Um, take note of a few things. A lot of the times, Warhammer Fantasy stuff will be dated on what the characters are... when the character is writing this. If you're... Uh, Peacock Warrior, I'm going to get back to you on that one in just two seconds. Um, so, this book here, The Life of Sigma, is an in-universe book. It's an in-universe text. But... If we look here, the printer's introduction in 2231, this book doesn't exist. Straight away, this book doesn't exist. Can we draw information from this book? Yes, we certainly can. Why? Because the cults, the cults are very much something that is ever-present. Cult of Uruk, Cult of Sigma, uh, Cult of Tal, they're, they're around. They are all doing their things. Um, don't think of Warhammer Fantasy's religion as um, uh, monotheistic. Uh, mono, monotheistic? Uh, one. As Sigma being the one, and that's it. Sigma's guys are just the most enthusiastic. That's really it. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, uh, if my character is backstory, they lived in Slovenia, would I know about vamps? <sighs> yes and no. Slovenia is definitely some further reading that I would highly suggest having a look at. Um, you would specifically have to look up Warhammer Fantasy Old World, because Games Workshop is being dicks about it, but anyway. Um, stuff, so. Slovenia is a separatist... Uh, state. Um, they uh, are neutral for the most part. Stuff in Slovenia is closed off. Not many people know anything about it. The only things that people will know, and now this is my favorite map that everybody should be using. Um, so let's, here's some of the maps that I'm currently using in this for everybody's following along. So, um, and again, this resource here has been dated, uh, 2522. So, let's, let's go over this Slovenia idea, okay? So, if you are from Slovenia, there are some things that you really need to know. A, your life is shit. You, you are having a real bad, you were having a real bad time there. Things get have been bad for a long time. Uh, everyone who is alive is trying to escape. The Von Karsteins, they are really oppressive and they are every bad um, and sort of terrible Eastern European, like cannibalistic, blood bathing, vampire mythos. Um, uh, in real history is essentially that times 50. Um, everybody wants to get the fuck out of Slovenia if you're there. You probably wouldn't have lived... You probably would have been smuggled out as an early age in Slovenia um, unless you were a part of a couple of groups. Um, and those groups are typically factions where they will be fighting back against the Lancastines, hitting one guerrilla stuff, and they live for quite, and they act, act, they do their stuff for quite a long time. Um, yeah, Slovenia is a hard place. Um, you probably wouldn't know about vampires. You would know that a lot of people are scared all the time. A lot of people are trying to flee. 
Um, the Von Karsteins are really, uh, they could kill you, they could wipe out a section of your village at any moment. Um, the people who know about that best, people in Ostermark. Um, the parts of this map is a little bit off, it's not 100% placed right, um, because Slovenia doesn't control all this. Um, uh, at the moment it probably does, it probably has annexed a good little section along here. Um, uh, Slovenia, they love to, yeah, they, they fuck shit up, they fuck shit up a lot, um, in this current year. Uh, if you're from Ostermark, Tabakland, or anywhere near the Stir or the Moot, which is where the Halflings are from, they would know about Undead. Uh, the, realistically, a lot of the vampires outside of Slovenia and outside of the Von Karstein lineage, um, unless stated somewhere else in the lore, is going to be within Slovenia, within the sort of upper groups of Slovenia, or they're going to be thralls. Vampire apprentice bitches, essentially. Essentially vampire bitches. Um, not quite vampires, but not quite human. Um, yeah, Slovenia is a real tangent. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the Von Karsteins uh, use, use a lot of necromancy, um, so a lot of their battles are fought with undead. Surrounding areas would know about the essentially the restless dead. Von Karstein's just raise every fucking grave they come across. Bunch of dead on the battlefield, yeah, up they get. Sort of deal. Um yeah. That's that's something to keep in mind as well. Battles and the details of battles are stuff that is really hard to source in writing. A lot of good content creators on YouTube um will do stuff uh that we'll put into details as well about what types of fights will happen the games are really good to have an idea about things like that um like your total war stuff like is where this map is um yeah essentially if you're from slovenia you would be smuggled out at a young age really lucky enough to escape or um uh a fleeing group of um, peoples from the surrounding areas. A lot of Ostermark, this whole section down here in Ostermark, all along this sort of border bit, is all sort of referred to, re sort of referred to as like, uh, I think that's like the, the Bleak Moors, the Deadwoods. Yeah, the, the Deadwoods where a lot of the undead that attack Ostermark and all this sort of stuff. So, um, my character, being from Ostermark, would know about Undead. Would know about the uh, attacks um, that Undead cause. Um, a real hate for the Undead, if you come from those lower areas of Ostermark. Um, yeah. Which then brings me into research your province. Your birth province. So, our character that we've got up on the side here. They were born in 1990. So they would have, they would have generational knowledge from things you could probably say, 1946 till their birth would be generational stuff that their parents would still occasionally talk about if they are in a comfortable living situation um, or in a safe township. Those are stories that we passed around from your 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 betters, your elders. The, the people older than you, um, the generation before you, the two general, the, the parental generation before you. Um, you would hear about these things. Uh, and we, we have to be very specific about the details we pull. So uh, here, let me... If I zoom in, how about zoom in? There we go. Oh, that's much nicer. We can see shit now. Ha ha. Um, things like, uh, so you would, your parents would probably tell you about, um, a great battle that, um, the empire has fought, you know, the, 
a, a, a keep falls to the Empire after 20 long years of siege. Their grandfathers fought in that war, blah, 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 sort of deal. You probably wouldn't know what keep it was. You're probably a little vague on those details. Maybe, maybe not. That's that's a question mark when it comes to knowledge. Um, the Maybe, maybe, well, like Harkon and the Blood Dragons. You probably hear about the Blood Dragons. They're like, they are sort of like your... That will be sort of like um, the the overall name for the army. So like for like for like that 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 group of people. So like uh, World War Two, uh, the Yanks. That's still generationally um, known. So you know it's it's like maybe maybe you know oh blood drain sort of stuff. Is this knowledge important to your character? No. No. But if somebody pops at somebody else, yeah, cool. Awesome. Vague ideas. Vague ideas in this in this area. This era? This is a big enough incident. This is a big enough thing for you to know about. You should you should know about the living, essentially, without emperors. With Civil war in all throughout parts of the empire. Every part of the empire is in shit, and it gets worse. Um, this here. Anything outside of the empire, unless you're Bretonian, you shouldn't know. You shouldn't know. Or elf. If your race, or if your faction race isn't, uh, um, imperial. You shouldn't know outside of the Empire. If you're a common, everyday bloke, you shouldn't know. Could you hear about this information from uh, hearing the chatter amongst the merchant princes or in the sword? Um, if you lived in a big city, you've probably potentially heard about something. Cathcay? Mm, you wouldn't really know much about Cathcay in universe. No international Murdoch media. Exactly. No international Murdoch media. You don't. You don't get any of that. There's, that's that's nothing. That is the stuff for people of for people that are your betters. The you've got to you really got to think about these things like the um like you are in a position of peasantry in real medieval times. And, of course, we really have no real proper frame uh, to say this is 100% what people in that era would know. But we have a decent idea. Uh, things, the affairs of state, typically, the only time a peasant would give a shit about that is who's fighting who, and are they fighting? Um, there is, these are, I, I should, probably should have prefaced all this. These are, these are things that we are, Broad stroking, just miles broad stroking. The finer details of your character is entirely up to you, but these are things that we are sort of really wanting to set a a, a general expectation of of pre existing knowledge. This is this is going to be the longest segment. Is pre, is 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 understanding how to pick and choose your pre existing knowledge, how to uh, cherry pick. Um, the uh, details so that they are then become rheumatized, so they are basic. Um, anything international, you really shouldn't know about. Really none of your business. Um, <clears throat> things like massive world shaking events, like a comet hitting somewhere, if you are living if you are living, you know, Middenland, or even Nordland, if you're living Nordland, and then suddenly Comet hits Ostermark, you probably hear about that a year later. Maybe, maybe six months later. So a lot of people are walking in other gold holes. But you'd hear about that. That? Everybody knows about that. Everybody will know about it. 
being wiped off the face of the planet. That's it. Details? Yeah. Big boom, that's it. Empire keeps things under wraps as well. So there's things that... These, this is like layers on layers on layers on layers on layers. You've got pre-existing knowledge, cherry picking, how to turn it in, turning in, turning that basic shit into a rumor. Then that next one is um, where you are currently, the massive events, what level of knowledge would you know? Okay, so Mordheim, you would know that Mordheim is gone. Don't go there, it's bad. Big boom. And apparently a comet hit it. Well, that's what this bloke down the road told me at the tavern. Devastating thing that happened there. See, that's that's how that is then naturally sort of rheumatized. I heard it from somebody. That's this layer. Second layer, num layer number two. Layer number three. Would you, in your so so socioeconomic class, have heard about this through the rumor mill, through the grapevine, or through the affairs of state? If you are not someone who is meant to be in the affairs of state, none of your business. You probably wouldn't know about it. You may have heard something going on, but not quite sure. I heard I heard there was a maybe there's some something going on in Minlands. Yeah, I mean we are in the Border Princes, which is down here. But yeah, you know, I've been living in the Border Princess. I've been exiled in the Border Princess since 2015. Oh, 20, say 2013. You know, I, I heard some rumblings about that. I wonder how Sylvania's gone. Yeah, they seem to have been on the move. Hmm. Feel it. Shame what happened in Mordheim. I heard it was a beautiful city. See, those are your layers. These are how you can naturally ground your character's knowledge is conversational stuff just with yourself. Socioeconomic. That's your third layer. Your fourth layer is if this involves something that really is like a ruinous power, uh, like chaos, or um, supernatural entities like demons, or vampires, or stuff that uh, is almost an Avengers level threat, or just below an Avengers level threat, you wouldn't know about it at all. At fucking all. There's no fucking way you'd know about it. End of story. Caveat. Little, little asterisk for now. Um, Witch Hunter. You'll know about those things. You keep that shit to your chest. If you're a warrior priest, you have a vague idea about this shit. You have, a, you have an inkling of some things. You've probably... Rumors. All rumors that's, that's right. You have inkling about these things. You have an idea that heretics are praying to some dark deity. Um, to what? Don't know. They just smeared a lot of blood everywhere and they are stabby. Oh, really? They're a bunch of corn cultists. He was a regular Joe, don't know that. You're going to tell that to the warrior priest. You're going to tell that to your... To, to, to your local witch hunter and be like, look, I, I saw some really fucking shit going on down there. I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but that don't look natural. But you guys need to check that out, please. And that's the job of those people. Those people would know what to look for and what those signs are. Those are the only people that should know about those high-entity Avengers level threats sort of shit. Um, which is... A good reminder for when we are creating um, quests. This is something that I um, was thinking about when creating um, my quest for my brother-in-law. He had this. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll I'll wait. I'll wait on that one. That one can wait. That that's. I'll come back to that. <clears throat> layer four. Nothing should go above layer four, unless you are the nobility. The, the runners, the leaders, the makers of the towns, the people, the, the holders of the coin. You shouldn't know about anything of that. Even the holders of the coin sometimes shouldn't even know about that. The next layer up is uh, if it's Skaven, you don't know what it is. If it's if it's furry, you could presume it. If it's a 
fucking giant ear, presumably. It's a weird fucking cow thing from the woods. Don't go near it. It's not yours. Skaven, you have no idea of. Sorry, you shouldn't know about Skaven. Unless you're of the people that should be dealing with those things, alright? Shouldn't know about that stuff. Um, those are stuff that the Empire is actively suppressing. Beastmen would be the most supernatural thing you would know, aside from the undead. Exactly. There's a... The, uh, me and my 2IC, Eric, we uh, sort of came up with this little sort of uh, thought, is that uh, the two roles of these of these people, the, the church, the church is one hand, and the witch hunters is the other hand of the empire. They are the two primary tools of the empire for controlling and suppressing panic within the empire. Uh, the church is to give people hope and prosperity. They are the light that fills people's days. Doesn't matter what cult that is. If it's part of the main human pantheon, doesn't matter. And that's another thing. Mono We're not monothocratic. Sigma rights, and again, Sigma rights are just the most enthusiastic. Because they're, they're God was man. Um, and we've got re I've got resources here that I can go into that in the religion section of this. The witch hunters, they're the ones that are in the shadow. And they are the ones that make sure the shadows don't move when they're not meant to. Yeah. Sigma is the best book. The filthiest book. Sigma. Um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, so, those are, those are, those are, those are sort of things to keep in mind as well. If you are not in those roles, if you have no, even if you have connection to those roles, if you are not specifically in those roles, those are things that you should know. Um, even nobles, even the people who are running the country would kind of know about those things. So-so. Swordcraft is Warhammer inspired. We are twisting and bending these rules a little bit. Doesn't mean you can't remove, can't use the absence of knowledge to make the events and stuff that happens interesting in this setting. Um, so, we've gone over a little bit, and it's 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 quite a bit to take in. So, that's sort of the first part of how how much knowledge do we know? How much knowledge should we be cherry picking out of these things? Uh, we should be simplifying that knowledge to a uh, a two beers deep barstool conversation, and then. What your socioeconomic class grants you to see into that. If you go, ah, oh, you know what though? I may be a potato peasant, but Jim from down the road told me about this thing. About these, these Skaven? No, nah, no he didn't. Jim from down the road isn't a potato person. Don't think like that. That's a bad way to think when it comes to RP. Jim down the road at a quest was to tell you that. Cool shit. Put up your Angelus. How did you find out about that information? Would you really know about that information? Yeah or no? That's, that's something that you can do in the moment. You can have a little bit of fun with. Um, or, if Jim from down the road told you that at the pub, and uh, he's like, oh yeah. Have you heard about Skaven? You can be like, "What the fuck is Skaven, mate?" and play the and play the and play into it with disbelief. And then which hunter? Hmm. Exactly. Um. You know, oh, it was, it was this big, and it was. It took me two hours to reel it in. 
Really? You're telling me that that flathead right there that's about the size of my hand took you two hours to reel in, mate? No, no, that's the bait. You sure about that, Jim? Let me ask, let me ask the marine biologist here. Does that support this? And your marine biologist would be a priest or a witch hunter. And you wouldn't see Jim again. That's the idea that will work. These are these are these are fun things. These are meant to be fun. They're, it, it, we're in a very serious, dark fantasy. Everything is grim and shit. It's like it's like Ireland during the potato famine. It's really shit and sad. Everybody's dying. So you've got to find and make your own fun. Um, bad analogies aside. Um. Now we can look at where we are in the world of Warhammer. <clears throat> the Empire consists of... Uh, uh, nope. Okay. The Empire consists of... Essentially, this. Actually, it's probably more like this. So, Reichland, Middenland, Nordland, Ostland, Hockland, Ostermark, Tabakland, Stirland, Avonland, Soland, Wissenland, Slovenia, and, and that's it. That is the Empire. With a caveat, we've got the little border princes down here. I'm pointing at the screen, you can't see it. <clears throat> oh, and the moot. I always forget the moot. They're just so happy there. Um, even though they're very close to like a little group. Um, we're all the way down here. Oh, look. What's this? We're, we're going through a... We're going through this pass here. Why are we going down here? Why are we going down to the Border Princes? Border Princes is a very bad place. The Border Princes is where a lot of people get exiled. A lot of people die. This is... Your dry ass, fucking stony, really just trash land. Hard to grow, far hard to farm, hard for crops. The border princes are essentially their own microcosm. They are the empire just on crack, not crack as in like yeah, wah, everything's fifty percent more. Not crack as in like mate, I've got bugs under my skin and they're biting me balls um you want can you can, can you sell me some more please I'll, I'll do anything for another hit that sort of crack uh the border princes have um uh people merchant princes vying for power all the time they are they are they are the First defense, shall we say, from the orcs and the goblins down in this area. From Death Pass to the Badlands. All the nasty shit, all the orcs, the Battle of Blackfire Pass. Oh, that's around about this area here, I think, off the top of my head. Or around this zone, or somewhere along here, Blackfire Pass, I should know. Um, but all the bad shit goes through us first. We get hit with it first. We get hit with the ogres. We get hit with the orcs. If you're a peasant, you definitely know what an orc is. It's, it's about six foot tall, seven foot tall. It likes to rip and tear, and it screams, and it seems like he has a lot, fun, a lot of fun killing your neighbor, Jim. Uh, you know what orcs are. We know what orcs are. Orcs are something we know. Ogres? Mm, yeah, nah. You would have heard, we in this area, in the Border Princes, would have heard about them. Um, if you're a, say, a new, sort of in the past 15, 10, 15 years to the Border Princes, maybe not, you might not have heard about ogres. You might have heard whispers of, of an even taller, different coloured, Essentially sounds like an orc. People say they're bigger. Yeah, that's probably what you know. 
where we currently are situated in Swordcraft is the Orc Mercs. Yeah, you would hear about giant, big-ass dudes. Sounds, yeah, sounds like big Orc man, but kind of not Orc, but also they, they will take money. So would your character know much about Ogres? No. My character is, so my personal character is a, uh, it's from Ostermark, um, and was a part of a big pilgrimage sort of thing. And I mapped out all that sort of stuff and things like that. Um, a, a part of a cult of Sigma, um, which is, which ties into our warband and everything like that. Um, I have no idea what an orc, what an ogre is. Orcs, on the other hand, fucking love punching them. That's, that's the sort of thing that sounds great. Awesome. Great way to die. Uh, Undead, fucking hate them. If you're from Ostermark, you know about them, you hate them. You kind of have a bad taste in your mouth from the blokes of Slovenia. You would you would spit on Slovenia, you would probably murder a Slovenia more than you would a Kislevite from Ostermark. There's a love-hate relationship between Ostermark and Kislevites. Um, anyway. Another aside aside, um, the... The area that we're in is in the Border Princess. This is this is all the bad shit in the Empire on crack. On bugs under your skin crack. Uh, which is where this map comes in. I really love this map. Links are in the chat again and in the description below and all that shit. Um, so, <clears throat> so, you remember how we had that pass? Uh, this pass along here is going to be sort of a main pilgrimage area. A lot of people will be put through it. Um, uh, if they are of a Sigmarite sort of descent. This is sort of uh, almost a rite of passage for, for Sigmarites to be able to go. It's like a, it's like a great honour to. Um, but coming to the Border Princes, uh, you, sort of this is your only way in and out. So it's a road less travelled travelled, if that makes sense. It's dangerous. It's probably not as dangerous as the other ways to get to the Border Princes. So I'm wondering, what would have been your general reaction from the recent in-character town hall meeting? So when we unveiled the ogre's hammer, I guess you, I guess generally you wouldn't have had a, wouldn't have recognised it. Personally, myself, I saw it and I thought, hmm, ogres, hmm, nah, I don't think I've ever heard or encountered them in my life. Okay, what the fuck is that? Why is there a big hammer? What the fuck is gut magic? Hmm. So it's just big orc, yeah. It's it's not, but it is. But you can buy them. Why would we buy something like that? That's essentially the go. And you know, you could you could argue there's a little bit of meta in there, and yeah, probably is a little bit of meta in there. You know, if the the main thing that you want to be doing as you're um, essentially playing improv, which is essentially what LARP is, this long form improv, is that you want to be making quick logical decisions that are going to um, best relate them to you. So, when the in-character town meeting happened and they unveiled the hammer, I was like, nice hammer. Then I saw the symbol in it and I was like, maybe not. So that's 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 those are things that you probably when you're in character is that you want to be thinking with pre existing knowledge. You want to be working with the knowledge that you are being given and uh shading it. Shading that knowledge with character, with your pre existing character knowledge. Um, if somebody came up to me and said We have a we have a problem with the graveyard I would be in full armor at the graveyard going, what the fuck's the issue? Let's do we do I need to burn it? Because I feel like I need to burn the graveyard. Sort of thing. Yeah. Not every two not every character is gonna be the same. Not every warband is character is gonna be the same. If they are a very regiment, uh so let's let's say if you are a warband that is uh, all from the same area. You were a uh, ex-military warband. Um, you, your warband, say, fled. 
and uh or were told to uh go to the border princes or you were chasing um a group of somethings whatever and somehow ended up in the border princes none of those soldiers are going to be the same person their experiences are going to be different they're going to be shared but they're not going to be the same if you are all say um from a land say like Ulthwan, which isn't on this map but we'll pretend Elfland. if you're all from elf if you're a, a group that traveled from from Ulthwan, you are going to be you are going to be similar you're going to have potentially shared experiences shared knowledge of Ulthwan, but that knowledge would change determined on what your reason for being over here is what led you to be over in the border princes elves in the border princes in this year in this climate my god you must be pretty important eh? oh elves and this is another thing to think about as well unless you're a dwarf elves are in this economy <laughs> Elves in this day and age are sort of something uh, that humans would hear about. They would probably might have seen one. They probably would have stopped and been like, Holy fuck, that's an... Is that an elf? No, Jim, it's an... It, oh, oh you, you, you're telling me it's an elf. Oh, it's an elf. Whoa. That's cool. Good day, mate. How you going? The elf will be like, what? What? Have you, have you never seen my kind before, stranger? Sort of thing, you know what I mean? Uh, yes and no. You're not going to stand on ceremony for everyone to come. If... Yeah, 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 you, it would be, it would be an interesting curiosity coming into town. If you didn't have one, if you didn't have, if you didn't have one, if you didn't own an elf, I got my elf at Costco. Uh, no, if you didn't have an elf living in your town around you, it would be an interesting curiosity of the day. What is this Monkai doing? Have you never seen one of us before? My god, sir. Yeah, so it would be it would be interesting, and dwarves wouldn't that same rule wouldn't apply to dwarves. Dwarves are in typically most cities as sort of cohabitative relationship. Um, dwarves manufacture essentially all the firearms in the empire, all of them. Uh, humans, of course, manufacture firearms, just not to the same, the same grade that dwarves do. Dwarves made black powder, and my god, is that crack the empire. Um, dwarves are more seen as, um, hot tip, do not shave dwarves' beard, doesn't go well. I just wouldn't touch a dwarves' beard in the first place. The dwarves, they're not seen as a lower class, they're seen as a realistically warhammer's warhammer's actually funny it's not that racist really isn't uh nice condiment there are elven runes in the empire usually avoided because alien architecture and light and magic wards yeah um we'll go back to elves elves are elves are sort of a mystery they're there's something where people would be like Whoa, damn man, elves, that's cool, but like, maybe we'll be on edge a little. You know, this this era is a very paranoid era. Um, there was a long time ago. There was a wizard war that still has left scars on the people of the empire, and that is still a thing. It's not race that people are prejudiced against it is occupation 
uh, if you're a mage, you may be gonna get gonna get a. Oh, so what type of mage are you? Um, a lot of the time, people from the empire don't sort of. <sighs> it's laid and it's faceted. We haven't had, we don't have colleges yet. The fact that we have a mages guild at all in any of it at any of our in our towns is very progressive um uh we're in a bad spot down here so this is the start of the border princess through here these are the two main settlements that you probably that people would probably only go as far everything else down this way yeah you're dead this goblin forest big bad area you would probably go up here and then around to get to those towns. You probably even wouldn't. You'd probably go to here and that's it. Yeah, nah, nah, I'm good, man. Nah, fuck that. Yeah, don't know if you know, but the Elves and Dwarves started... The Elves and Dwarves War started from an elf shaving a Dwarves emissary beard off. Look, that wouldn't surprise me. See, that wouldn't surprise me. A human would laugh at that story. A dwarf would write the human down in the grudge in the grudges in their book of grudges, and the elf would have a little bit of a chortle and go, "Oh, don't take it so bad, don't take it so bad, little dog, poor baby." Let me try it on you. You know what I mean? Like somebody's getting shanked that night, and uh, only one's walking out of the bar. So the dwarf's probably going to shank the elf and then the human first. So, um, anyway, um. Yeah, so it's not it's 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 about it's about occupation, it's about um what sort of uh prehistory stuff. Dwarves I think live a little bit longer than humans. Um uh they coexist in human cities, they um are predominantly going to be um doing things within those human cities that help improve the quality of life of those human cities, incidentally. So a gun in the Warhammer Fantasy universe is like having a latrine. Or not a latrine, more like a toilet that flushes. It's like soap in the Warhammer universe a gun. So um yeah. Uh, they're gonna be producing things and um you know making things better for people out of just sheer we both live here and might as well not be we might as well try and not make it as shit. Um, and these are the twists that Swordcraft does to make their setting um, accessible. Okay? So, again, it's been a while, so I'm going to broad stroke again. These are broad strokes. These are things that we are applying to help twist Swordcraft's setting to of the Warhammer Fantasy setting to Swordcraft as a bar. We are reducing our scope down. We are thinking about context, pre-existing context, and socioeconomic, socioeconomic um, status, and how that shades our pre-existing knowledge, and how our pre-existing knowledge shades the information currently being given to us. Um, this is going to be a ramble in the bottom, I can just say it. Um, I'm not going to edit it anyway. Um, so, Border Prince's... Typically, this is the main area of the border princess. This is where most of the stuff is going to happen. Most of the things are. We're not there. Uh, if we scroll down here, so uh, Whistleland, Avaland, main sort of way to come through. Another sort of safeish way to come through. Yeah, I say safeish in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. So if you scroll down here, we go down here. Let's see, uh, river. I can't read that one. Uh, we've got the Skull River, which leads from. The Blood River. Yeah, the Blood River uh, spikes off. It spikes off into the actual Blood River down here. And then Swordcraft actually is set here. In this section right here. Just in this little little nice little bit right here. Can't zoom in any further, so this section here. Kriegster, I think, is in like either around this section bit here. So I think Sudenberg's up. I think um, Iron Triangle's down here. 
And I think... S I think the others are scattered along this way. Um, so yeah, I think Kriegstall's around here. So the Ballarat chapter's down around here. Um, so, let's take in our surroundings. Uh, across the Black River, we have this savage Broken Tooth Wolf tribe. They're probably a bit busy fighting each other. Uh, so we... Sudenberg is up to the left, I believe. Up and, like, this way, you reckon? Like, here-ish, or like here? Uh, I, I think that's probably right. Yeah, I think you're probably right about that. Um... So, taking our surroundings. And remember, this map is a uh, quite a bit 530-something years ahead of where, where our current setting is. Um, orcs were essentially pioneers out in the middle of nowhere. Essentially, the fact that we made it this far into the Border Princes at this year, in this economy... Fucking astounding. Our our town has been stomped a couple of times before. We're currently living in some ruins. That's why half of our wall at Craig Store is gone. Um, but the people of the Empire and the races of the Warhammer Fantasy Universe are hardy people. We try to make the best of things. So... Now that we know where we are, let's zoom out and take in our scope. So, we've got the Empire, Elfland, uh, some Wood Elfland, I think, with Bretonia mixed in along here. We've got the Chaos Wastes, where a lot of Norska is. Where is Norska? They're all your... Norskans, your Chaos Warriors, um, they're the nasty Viking people. Um, you were Albion, which is like Scotland pickish sort of deal. Uh, the fact that they can come over, the fact that we've got a few of those down this far, they're well travelled. So, again, the fact that we've, we're zooming out and looking at where we're coming from and looking sort of what distances we have to travel and what things would be coming to here, um, we've got to then do the same thing as we do with our character knowledge. So this is why the ramble at the start had to happen. Um, the shades of our pre-existing knowledge have to then make sense and apply to the context of where we are in the current world. We can't have, you can't reasonably have things that are threats the Empire are dealing with. So, um, things like, and these, of course, broad strokes, Avengers level threat stuff. Um, these are like, um, an orc army coming out of nowhere, just starting to smash into the Empire. That's when Swordcraft ends. Straight up, nobody lives from that. We do not have the... Because I think the way Swordcraft runs it, and I'm fairly certain, I think I know who Void Shade is, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the way Swordcraft runs is your player pop, your weekly player pop, is your weekly, is your town's, that's your town's numbers. That's how much population you have. So, Craigstore, around about 120. You just, you round either side. Um, whereas, say, somewhere in the Empire, even down close to the Border Princes, like, that's a, that's a, that's a biggish town. It's Probably a population of a, it's probably a population of a thousand, maybe two thousand, be a little bit more, somewhere between a thousand and five thousand. That's that's a fairly decent population. 
Creed story is a Hamlet somebody forgot about. Um, the fact that we... Creed story is sort of a special case for us because we the way we run a game and each chapter will run their game different which changes a few things so they've got to a they've got to be able to play a game and rp in a, in a realistic sense and still provide those things if you have say a chapter of 30 or 50 um not much is going to get done in a village of that size stuff will get done but you're more of a couple of houses in a paddock when you're that size so there are concessions, there would be concessions made, and that would be, I would, and this is me spitballing, that would be per chapter, based on per chapter. I'm not too sure of other chapters' numbers outside of Ballarat and, of course, Melbourne. Um, so our scope and the things that constantly attack us, which is why a lot of our sagas turns, which is our stories um, that happen week to week, for those watching at home, um, are primarily going to be goblins. They're going to be goblins that are attacking us. Um, and the fact that we had some orcs, I'm just readjusting this. Hi, guys. Um, the fact that we had um, a, a small party of orcs, and that's key, a small party of orcs snooping around, that is like, shit your pants. Like, where there's one, there's going to be more. And more is bad. Goblins, they're bad. Uh, uh, where there's one, there's more. They're kind of small enough that if you set the if you set something on fire with them in it, you probably wiped out them. They're just as ferocious as orcs, but they just sort of don't have the same stature that an orc and destruction that an orc could bring within the same context of how you're facing them. So, we, again, so, we are looking at where we are, the context of what we know, how that shades, what information we're being given, and how that then, and how that setting is then being brought over, and what realistically we would have in a, a Hamlet like Creed story. Um, which is not a lot, but there's things that we can do and there's things that we can have fun and make with. So I'm going to do probably something that, uh, is going to, uh, let me pull this over here for a tick. Um, I'm going to do something that, um, uh, I was arming and ring about, but I will show it for the class and I will maybe make a link to this so people can see. But it's in my other one. It is. Uh, <clears throat> so my quest and this comes under stuff that we were um, discussing today, uh, discussing the other day, Grant, um, about how we write a quest and how um, we then apply that information to that is that Kriegstor can have things happen to us. We can have ogres happen to us. We can have the undead. We can have uh, turns of the winds, which is what magic is. Um, and that can then influence things and make things happen that wouldn't normally happen here. So um we could be attacked by we could have things of intrigue and i'm focusing on specifically pointing out intrigue because that way it gives us a basis to uh, uh yeah okay i don't know how to really get that out of my head um that one's yeah that one hurt me a little bit um <laughs> i just took an avengers level of threat to the brain so up on screen now is my uh quest that was for ballarat quest um this is something that i obviously had to get approved 
um, these are things that um, obviously I these are these are a couple of revisions have had happened to this. Um, I am just going to hide that. We don't need to save that just anymore. Um, <clears throat> so if I can figure out how to zoom on this, here we go. 125. Ah, oh, we might as well go 150. Here we go. Yep, perfect. That was lovely. So my quest at uh, Ballarat Quest was a night game. We got attacked, and there was a, um, uh, uh, between me and my brother-in-law and a few other people on Krieg Store's um, RP page, um, we had something happen. And there are things in Warhammer Fantasy that realistically no one should ever know about, aside from, say, like, even your top level people would not know the full story to something. So, a lot of people talk about Warpstone. And Warpstone's always something like, oh, yes, Warpstone, we want that. Um, Warpstone is something that Skaven do. Um, they really should be the only people, the only well, people that should know about really Warpstone. And the authorities taking care of the. Uh, safety of the town. Um, your nobles probably wouldn't be paying too much attention to it unless it really affected them. Um, but they may know it by another name. Rest in peace, Mordheim. It was Sigma baby. <laughs> um, they like your nobles would be only paying attention to that sort of stuff if that is disrupting their sort of luxury their day-to-day. -day. They would only know about things like Warpstone if they were close to Mordheim. Because when the comet hit Mordheim, it sprayed that shit everywhere. And that is also a sort of a catalyst for why Vlad von Karstein started attacking. But being people, being average Joes, being uh, what we've already pre-discussed, you, know, um, you wouldn't know about that. The nobles, on the other hand, would probably have heard about Warpstone in a different way. In its uh, more inert cousin, Veardstone. So Veardstone is Warpstone, but it's essentially a quarter full battery. Is it good? No. It's still Warpstone, technically. And Warpstone... It's bad. It's 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 uranium. It's uh every every sixties, seventies, and eighties sci-fi rolled into one with all the bad realistic effects. Nope. It is the radioactive waste in all of its states prior to being radioactive waste, while still being radioactive waste. It is quantum radioactive. It is quantum. Ah, uh, yes, yes and no. Beardstone is a is is funny because it's essentially is just warpstone. Its its state really hasn't changed, which is why warpstone sort of why I like to quote why I like to sort of joke about it being sort of almost like the quantum mechanics, um, uh, of sort of Warhammer. It isn't isn't something. It isn't. It is and isn't going to harm. It is and isn't going to do what you want it to do. Um, so, Beardstone uh, sometimes appears in different colours. Sometimes I feel like I, I, I have off the top of my head, and I would take this, I take all this with brains off, but I would take this specifically with a very large rock salt lamp. Um, uh, I feel like I've heard and read before that Veardstone could potentially come in a yellow or like an amber variation, um, which is I think why a lot of um, sort of upper echelons and nobles and stuff like that will sort of have some sometimes. Um, it's a it's a passing it's a passing merchant that got it from some fuck knob out nowhere in a cloak who seemed a little bit hairy, but you know not really sure, but maybe. Uh, and he gives it to a gift and spruits it up to a noble so he can get passage somewhere. 
sort of thing. That's how it would enter those hands. Um, uh, so in our setting, Warpstone, nobody should really know about it. Elves would know about Warpstone. Old elves would know about Warpstone. And again, we're going back to that generational knowledge. Uh, if they are from Ulfheim, they would probably have heard stories and have been probably informed about the, uh, you know, the trepidations and the bad of Warpstone. In fact, elves are naturally somewhat immune to Warpstone because they elves are creatures of magic um, and Warpstone is inherently magic. Um, uh, in the Warhammer Fantasy universe, we have two moons. One is your standard moon. The other one's green, and that's an omen. It's a bad moon. If it's just that moon, a lot of people are locking themselves indoors. You don't go out. You don't go out when there's just that one moon in the sky. <laughs> nah, when it's the when it's the full moon of, the, of that moon, bad moon. That's a warp stone moon. That's essentially what happened. The, the, the comet from that, a piece of rock from that, flew from that moon and smashed into Mordheim and trashed it. But, anyway. Green moon bad. Warp stone, oh, it's green as well. It is also bad. Comes in a variation called Beardstone. So, coming back to the quest and how we can then shade and twist things into our own settings and to add them to make them fun. So the RP that happened on the on the Priest or Sorcerer page, a uh, Priest or RP page, uh, was a creature that came from beneath uh, Krieg's door. Um, it appeared to be fairly immune to a lot of attacks, which was strange. Um, it seemed to uh, just be really sort of higgly piggly, but it, after, it seemed actually fairly weak. Like glass cannon, let's say. Let's let's look at the, the scope of a glass cannon. Um, so what happened is that me and my brother-in-law then decided to make a quest on this. Um, the idea is that this thing uh, that's been killed now, so it has been in the, throughout the quest, it's been unbound. Uh, they got to that achievement, um, and then the quest changed a little bit. Yeah, elves have a more of an understanding of it. It's bad stuff. We aren't really affected by the corruption. So, corruption, no. So, yeah, if Warpstone were to spread in Swordcraft, the various elves would likely lock down the town and do a little purge. <clears throat> yeah. To humans, Warpstone is like, oh, that's pretty. I like that. Put it in my pocket. And then burn a hole in their pocket and grow an extra leg out of the hole. That's what Veardstone will do. Sometimes, Veardstone will give you that give you a benefit. Oh, you know what? I may have a little burnt hole in me, like, but I feel like I've run maybe like five or six miles. Oh, shit, my muscle mass feels really good. Yeah. Six months later, they've got super cancer, and that super cancer is sentient. So, we, th we think about the drawbacks and the shades of things again. So, creature was a flesh golem. Uh, it was bound with magic was bound with different wind it was bound using the corpses of the bodies from within um Craig's door uh so here's how i essentially went about it. i started with thinking about what that creature what the creature did in the rp and how it moved how it attacked and how i could effectively translate that into a quest into something that would be able to be done um so we think about how many hits something can take how many hits you can effectively count to um when you're being barraged by people 24 is a good number if you want something to last um when it's getting smashed to shit uh, you give the creature some leeway so, the stat block was it deals play it deals standard damage player v player. So you 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 really want to be highlighting everything that would that you want it to do, and that you want people to be able to do to it. 
Um, and players don't actually get to see sort of this stuff. So pulling back the curtain a little bit. Um, uh, uh, identifying what perks it have and what its behavior is like. Yeah, that's what we're up to while the mages were dealing with a banshee. Um, so, its behavior. It was a really fun fight, and I'm really glad it turned out really well. I was really nervous on the actual Ballarat quest, to be honest. Um, so, setting, um, setting a thing's behavior doesn't necessarily limit, it's almost like director's notes uh, on how you, on how something should be feeling, how it should be behaving in a certain moment. So you're giving it a, giving the, the essentially the, the actor a broad stroke brush of, here's what the character is. So, wild creature on a rampage, uh, if it's near death, it still has its sort of fight and fight response. Uh, no, nah, I'm about to die. I'm fucking off. Um, and then I gave it some triggers. So a HP in range. This will trigger a HP range during one to five. So you, it's got a level of survivability. So this is a thing that is being given life, that uh, escaped. So it's got a little bit of brain functionality. It works sort of like a pig or like a, a like a like a wild animal that. Uh, is, say, predator style thing. Not as a, but more of a, more of a, I'm going to hunt and stalk. Um, what got added to this, we'll discuss later on the actual quest, stuff got added um, to sort of buff and change. And you can do that because if you're running the quest, it's your quest. If you're running it, you can buff and change things to better fit um, the the level of reception you're getting. So not the outcome, but the level of reception. <laughs> so, uh, thinking really well and defining perks for creatures um, is important, and you want to be very clear about how this works. So, and even flavor text and stuff can also give some really good, can help people really, really uh, remember. And make them understand sort of what type, at least the actor reading it, at least uh, the person playing that, because um, let's be honest, Soulcraft is essentially a lot of mediocre actors, um, including myself. We're all mediocre actors prying, applying our trade. Uh, lots of improv. Improv! Um, so uh, giving people the idea how things work, how things move along, uh, how things um, uh uh, mechanically and, um, what is it? It's, uh, physically happening to that creature, happening to that character, happening to that NPC and all that sort of thing. Uh, so this one, you know, between powers of will, have a warp this creature, cursing with thick and skinned. <clears throat> all damage inflicted upon this creature is negative one HP. So, fairly simple. Takes one HP damage. Um, they gave it a skill, Shocking Grasp. Um, didn't get used that much, surprisingly. Um, I'll get used a little bit, and then I gave it to the cultists. They were like, cool! Um, whatever forged this, uh, this fiend caused it to have an unstable control over the winds. This, the creature has a Veritas Command Agony. <clears throat> this is modified to work like this. The creature makes contact with a player and will shout Veritas Agony. And these are things that, if you have things like this, where there is a command, a brief has to happen with the players. Players have to be informed about a command because thematically, that Veritas Agony is something just to easily push up. You know, that becomes that becomes the fog in the the fog on the glasses. It's happened, but it doesn't break immersion of people there. But Veritas Agony, you're in pain for thirty seconds sort of takes it out of it and stops the flow of combat. So that's <coughs> so that's sort of sort of that's when you start needing to do briefs is when you're adding actual two side mechanics where people both have to know about what's going on. People don't need to know it's HP. People don't need to know how much damage it's taken. They just go creature hit and if it drops, cool. We won. All people really need to know. Um, regeneration, 
Uh, does this fiend no death, or is it one with a foul win? A temporary per creature. Once a creature is slain, zero HP, it will start regenerating and not be interrupted in the state. Once it reaches its desired HP, it can get up and return to combat or escape. Uh, the monster comes out at night, is hard to kill, uh, and can use spell on spam. If it enters a building, it has effectively escaped. So, <clears throat> again... When you are putting people in a situation where they are going to potentially be fighting more than one person, you have to give these people an out. Um, uh, and if that means they've escaped and that combat has essentially ended, you can break character and you can say, "Creatures escaped. Shit, where did he go?" Or you can, or if you, or if you can pull it off, um, you can go, "It's gone. Where has it gone?" It must have fled under town. My God, the foul fiend of this thing. Sort of thing, you know. You can, you can, you can twist it. You can think about ways about how if something escapes, or if you give your your guys that are volunteering to do your quests an out for safety. That's something as well. Um, is to think about uh, how many people may potentially catch wind of it, and then expanding from there on the fly if need to. There's always people that are going to want to volunteer to um, be in a position where they are not playing their character, especially during a game where it gives them an option to do something different. So Chaos Cultists or Skaven. You know what I mean? There's, there's always going to be potentially a, a pool of volunteers that you could maybe grab from. Seven may not be enough, but seven's a good start. Seven's better than what I started. You've done... Yeah. Seven's, seven's a really good start because, A, you've got people there to um, watch each other's back. You've got people there that are going to um, uh, provide support through, and there's going to be enough of them there to cause enough of a ruckus that it's not just going to be punching on one dude. Um, limiting, if you are taking in sign-ins to do this, to do stuff like quests, like what I did, <clears throat> setting a limit is always a good idea to test the waters and see how much you get for it. But something like what you're planning um, won't necessarily have to. That seven that you've got, Um, a thought would be is if they're not playing their characters um, and I think you did mention uh, that in your costuming section um, is that uh, having them uh, different to what their characters is is always important it gives a, gives a separation of the stuff yeah. Hmm. 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 Not everybody's gonna. The 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 thing is, and primarily, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 actually fair. There's a there's a level of plausible deniability there. Um, primarily for the people at home, uh, it's important to definitely have a different differentiation between those two things for those people. So having those people well ahead of time, aware that there will be a costuming requirement, <clears throat> fucking black cloak, face paint, um, uh, don't wear your regular quest outfit for it set yourself aside black skivvies black plain black skivvies or something like that for yourselves you know something something outside and then add your stuff specifically for this to that it gives gives an option main takeaways when writing a quest is your stat block thematically what's going to happen thematically thematically with your mechanics what's going to happen and then um, setting in triggers and yeah, easily identified as a different character. 
um, which is something that you should people at home should think about is um, uh, yeah, it definitely has to be easily identified as a different character. Um, uh, 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 a hood with a mesh over it, with a with a with a sort of a sort of a, 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 a not a tight mesh, but a, a loose mesh over it. That's another way to be like, oh, that's a different character. That's potentially a shade. What the fuck is that? I should maybe go probe that. That 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 then peaks and draws people over. Is it? If and um, if it's just like a slight variation, it's going to be are they just in are they that character or is it just in another thing? And it's that is not a deal breaker for anybody if you put the antlers up and go, I'm a different character. Cool. I'm gonna walk up and I'll come back. Easy. Face paint, hair gel, all good options. Voice change is another good option if you can do voices. Even if it's a bad voice that you've been doing in the mirror for months. Go for it. I used to, I used to try and do a deep voice. I don't have a deep voice. That was for a deep deep bad boy. <laughs> Just roll it. Roll your punches as long as you're having fun. That's the main thing. Um, but when in a position where you're creating stuff, this is stuff that you should really be thinking about: is the outs, the safety sort of stuff that you need for your guys, um, the mechanics, making sure your guys are 100% across the mechanics lessons I've learned, but, uh, not mistakes. Um, <laughs> so, now, yes. everything's a learning experience, exactly. Um, now is, when you're in a quest, when you're writing a quest, now is the thing when you start thinking about, um, how you want that, uh, the, the separate encounters to function. So, uh, I label out the encounters with the win-lose conditions, so I write things a little bit here, a little bit here, as you can probably tell by this very long tech talk. Um, first encounter. So the first encounter works for for this quest that already happened as follows. Um, uh, first encounter works as follows. The call of the creature is heard, and the congregation uh, the congregation goes on a patrol. <clears throat> so how this quest worked is that uh, I was running the church in Kriegstall. Uh, we would get, I would say, oh, there's been a recent attack at Craig's door, a creature, um, you know, has been, has been seen. It looks like, uh, it, well, has been seen, has been defeated. It looks like it has been man-made. Uh, a lot of bodies has disappeared from our graveyard. We are quite concerned that, um, the whoever made this is making more. And then that sparks the quest. People are always going to come into a guild and ask for coin. Ask for something to earn coin. So this is obviously an opportunity to earn coin. Uh, not every quest needs to earn coin. The quest itself is the reward most of the time for players. Coin is just a great incentive. Um, so <clears throat> definitely talk to your organisers and your guild leaders about if you want something to do. And of course, you know, come with notes, come with rough copies, come with essentially it written, it done, and then be prepared to take notes. Um, you're always going to have to make notes. Uh, so this first encounter, the creature is, makes, a, makes a call, the congreg congregation starts hearing it, it goes, okay, this is a, something's a little bit odd, let's sort of fan out a little bit, purposely put your groups into positions of vulnerability. This is when they are going to... Positions of vulnerability. This is when you're going to end up getting the sort of those peaks of the events. So peaks of things where they get ambushed, where something jumps out and they fuck it up or it fucks them up and they're going to have a laugh about this later. Broad strokes again, we're talking. Um... Uh, the congregation moves, uh, it will try to ambush the congregation. Combat will then happen. Uh, where if you're doing combat, uh, make sure you're doing combat in an area where it is safe to do so. Obviously, quests have to be pre-approved, so make sure that everybody within 
uh, sort of running that event sort of has a section for you, for stuff to be slowed in. So that way, you know, everybody who's running a guild would be a part of the sort of pre-quest sort of meeting. Obviously, that's what we had. We had a pre-quest meeting. We sort of went over a few things, what was going to happen quite a few times as we were going through towards the event and in, then the final day, and then the first day into sort of the, the event make sure everyone's doing it and everything so we know stuff and that we are aware and then yeah um yeah uh so make sure people are aware um uh don't assume everybody's going to be in this going to be there for the event for the combat um if your people are going to attack somebody um make sure it's light touch everyone if they don't look like they're a if they don't look like they're armed, they're probably not there to fight, um, necessarily. If pick and choose your targets, what I'm to say. Um, not everybody's going to be armed at quest um, in the town. Most people will have something on them. Um, but if it looks like a merchant from a stall that's just stepped around to fix up something, maybe don't hit them. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe choose somebody who's uh, who looks like they're drawing for something. That's probably going to be a good target. Um, those are things that you can talk to uh, your your volunteers um, in those situations, primarily for the people at home. Um, yeah, and Grant, I've already read your thing, so we already know that you're hundred percent across all this stuff. Anyway, so this is primarily for people at home stuff. Um, uh, combat happens. Uh, the creature gets zeroed and forced to regen. Uh, it it so this first encounter, the creature is to flee. Uh, it gets zeroed. Um, if it is zeroed twice, which is what happened, it got zeroed twice, it couldn't res again, um, which is what me and my brother-in-law discussed. I didn't put it in my notes in this one. Um, uh, this is sort of the second last draft. The last draft was um, on the day. <laughs> um, he got zeroed twice. Uh, we dragged him into the chapel, and uh, he um, got up attacked and then um fucked off and oh shit it's gone um he got up and got zeroed a couple of times actually um now that i'm sort of thinking about it um just to sort of there was only a few people in the first sort of thing um and which was sort of fun and they were told everybody about it and brought more people so um the day two event sections so they're always going to the first is going to be smaller the second is always going to probably be bigger um and you can always we can always plan for that. Um, it also does depend on your event. If it is like a fetchy quest sort of thing, um, actually, as I'm going through it, this is actually probably a good thing to explain as well. Um, so we'll start with, we'll keep going with the first encounter. Um, so uh, Force Regen, it, it fled. It got zeroed a bunch of times. It fled. Um, and... We're like, oh, fuck. You've got to leave hooks. Plot hooks for people that are invested in the quest to follow on. Whether or not that leads exactly to the next encounter, but it's something for them to do, for them to engage, and for them to uh, take up those times throughout quest which I think a couple of us have probably had. Um, if you've been to a quest before, you probably have those few times where you're like, I really want to do something, but I don't feel like I have anything to do or anywhere to get something to do. Um, I don't really feel like either about making my own trouble sort of deal. Um, uh, sort of the more of those that we can have there, um, the better. Mine was the creature left a, um, uh, uh, a what's gonna call it, and that was to lead on to stuff for the people invested in that. So, uh, left a sample, the, we, I then grabbed a thing, stuffed it in the thing, locked it up, and went, that's going to fucking chapel, and I'll deal with that in the morning, because, ouch. Um, so, uh, then, uh, yeah, 
So that, that happens. Um, the following events happen. As it appears, one of the same creatures uh, has attacked. Um, uh, the, the runner of the quest, Light Milk, will provide myself, will provide a report on the last creature. So this is somebody come in. I want to make some point what you got. Cool. Here's this. Have a read. This is what's happened last time. Here's what happened last night. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's come back. Uh, something, another one's come back. Um, I want you to, I want you to find leads. As you can see, I'm very busy in my paperwork. As I'm not doing paperwork, but eating things. And not paying attention to the general vicinity around me as people walk in and out of the chapel, stealing shrines. Yeah. He did it in front of my eyes, like, a good couple of times. I'm like, you fuck. I didn't manage that. It was purposely tagged to be stolen. Um, uh, and so, yeah, it's a very comprehensive report. Uh, you know, you have the half information of things. Your quest, you have half information. People are to go and get full information to work to get the full information for it. Somebody else is going to be always better than you. Always have a better idea of something. Um, you've got to be able to do that thematically. Yours is a little... Yeah, you... No. Yours is... Yours, yours is perfectly fine to be a singular. Um, the way yours works is um, uh, you have a win-lose scenario with Encanto 1. Uh, the win... So the win-lose scenario is on the position of the players engaging in the quest. So the lose scenario for yours is that it then happens again with adders, with non-player knowledge adders, should I say. Um, <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is something to something to do. Yeah, the win lose condition of yours would be they fail the roaming, um, and then the the second encounter happens. If they succeed in the roaming, the second encounter would happen straight away with caveats. Um, uh, you can you can have a lose condition for the player be a positive for the quest. Um, which I'll get into some sort of explaining through. So, uh, what happens is that I had half information, because I don't have any knowledge, of, my character doesn't have any real knowledge of magic. Um, magic is for other people, not my cup of tea. I like hitting things, and I like praying to Sigma. Um, so, I can give my best description of what the fuck I thought it was, but I can say, uh, working within the people and within the leaders of the town, the magic authority had the um, we we agreed that the magic authority would look further into it because they have a better idea and knowledge of these things. Um, to the previous one again to, to break it down, <clears throat> this one we hey, during the fight, you know, the quest giver identified yes, in fact that we do believe that it is similar or of the same nature so we can say fairly confidently that investigating the previous thing or talking about the previous thing is going to help us um combat it <laughs> obviously you're not always going to be you're, you're you're busy in a village you're all trying to make ends meet you're all trying to do stuff you know not everybody's going to talk this is these are the gaps these runaround quests these things in between these are the things for the players to do so that way they become more grounded and invested into the actual thing so magic authority had the comprehensive report unfortunately for the kislevites uh they had to um uh do a quest for the magic authority which i left up to um the magic authority uh, I was going to write them a uh, mini quest for them to do. A, I ran out of time, and B, uh, I thought might be a good out for Magic Authority to be able to um, have that 
option to give um uh, uh give me two seconds i have to go deal with a spider um uh i'll be back take this time guys to grab a glass of water grab a glass of water and hydrate i have to deal with the spider Okay, I'm back. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> oh, no, that's all right. Oh, that's bad hair. <clears throat> okay, so. Ignoring my... The state of my hair that it's gotten into. Um... <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, so do your, have your, have your A and B sections, um, which are going to be, uh, different stuff. Uh, if they failed getting the information from the Magic Authority, which is going to be the easier stuff, which was the easiest thing to get, um, they would have had a hard time being able to unbind and kill the creature. <clears throat> So, uh, because the lights had to, um, uh, give an elf a hug. Give a mage, a magister elf a hug. But I can tell you what, the magister was very happy. Because the lights, not so much. Not so much. Um. No, I think, I think they managed to talk me into that being both. Um, Yeah. Um, it's something along those lines. It was, to be fair, it's a fairly, it was a fairly while ago. Um, sorry. It was quite a long time ago, yeah. Um, <laughs> good old Nurgle. Um, so yeah, Magic Authority, we just said, you know, if, if, if you have something that you just want fucking done and out of your way, or if it's just like, go get me this, um, and it just happens to be a, a shit quest that you just need out of the way to progress somebody else's awesome cool and i'm throwing help your way if you need it <laughs> or i'm throwing something um uh so uh condition a magic authority will have a comprehensive report but they will not give it up easily uh q random fetch quest uh section b so it's another can win lose condition it's another um thing that the players are doing outside of the encounter um whispers of research is being held by somebody in the underground might hold 
an even better insight into the construction of the creature, potentially authored by its creator. Oh yeah, I'm talking to Greg. Your your call is on the screen as well. Um. Uh, the this one uh is not explained well in my document. This was a letter penned by its creator, written in code. Um. This was a thing that had a glyph on the back of it and uh essentially uh it was written in a way where if you read sort of in between the lines uh you would have or um or have it translated translating stuff ah oh, amazing Absolutely amazing. Anybody can be a code breaker when you're, you know, writing a quest. Um, you can give it off to a magic person. They go, Hoobity, 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 ha, come back in an hour. Go get some lunch, brah. And then they come back in an hour and, oh, it's magically been translated for. And you give the TLDR because you don't have enough time to write the translation. Or you just go, I've seen stuff like this before written. Purely. Uh... Come back in a little bit and I'll, uh, I'll have a discussion with a few people. And that makes it look like the quest giver is doing stuff. So it seems reasonable that you're doing things. Um, and then so you can be like, I have no fucking idea what this letter's going on about. But I've got somebody to look at this glyph here. Fun fact, uh, it's a glyph of unbinding. A peculiar glyph of unbinding using certain winds. Um, which is what, in fact, I went with this one. My character isn't going to be smart enough to read in between the lines of some things. Uh, he will probably has a better idea of having an understanding of hearing the words you're not saying, but reading the in between the lines. Yeah, probably not so much, especially if it's sort of a rosy letter pen to somebody else, sort of thing. And oh, I'm having a wonderful trip on my summer vacation. Ah, it's just very fruitful here. Fucking fruit and green stuff. I'm fucking what about? Oh, grapes, right? Olives. That's what they do. They're they're nice, delicious. I miss the war maidens. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's that's how you can sort of play it off. You give yourself out. You make a fun little interaction with that, um, making the player wait. That's actually pretty important because it can cause apprehension. They're just like, you know what? It took us a little bit to get this. I want to know how it's gone. We may come back in. We may come back a little bit sooner. And if they come back a little bit sooner, awesome. They came back. That's the main thing. They didn't forget about your quest. They came back. That's how you know you've got them. So, then happened the second encounter. Uh, the second encounter happens the same as the first. So, we're, we're repeating the same threat. We're reinforcing that this is, uh, oh fuck, that this is a big thing. It is actually serious. The characters are now taking it serious. They are, they are going to, um, experience this creature now at its best. Um, this is the opportunity now in your second encounter, um, to buff. To buff your players based on how the first encounter went. If you had five people and say Grant, you've got seven. Um, if you had five people rock up and absolutely just stomp your encounter, uh, time to buff your guys. Buff them however you see fit. You need to give them more HP. Awesome. You want them to count every second hit? Go for it. Make it easy for your guys to be able to be buffed and still pose a safe level of balance so if after your first encounter you're noticing more people working walking around in full plain armor um if it's a combat encounter that you've created um maybe maybe we buff your guys a fair bit more maybe we give them some some 
they, yeah, they'll get a lesser boon. A, a passive, primarily a passive that players don't need to know about, is always going to be better. Yeah, is always going to be better than um giving them a mechanic. Uh, a, a, an active mechanic that they get a trigger. Exactly. Passives. Mm. Yeah. Um... Uh, so, in my one, the second encounter of the day was the same as the first, and ambushes the players, combat happens. Player will use a ritual on the beast. So, uh, in the sort of two days thing, uh, things were happening. They got, the first encounter happened, went, oh shit. I said, okay. Um, so as I'm going through this, things are coming back to me. I said, oh shit. Okay, so we've got a thing that we can um, essentially have ready and for you guys to get sorted so we can do this thing, to finish this thing. Um, second encounter happens the same as first, attempts to ambush players, combat happens, but this time the players will use a ritual on the beast slash weapon or both. If successful, the quest ends, the body is taken away, burnt, and its ashes is sealed and blessed in a box that is viewable in the chapel for future quests. So, I've set my. I'm currently making something that's going to be a follow on to this um, that can be seen in the chapel come next Ballarat quest. Um, having those things where I think if you're in a situation where you can have those things pop up all the time or have them in town in the next following quest as sort of a, a little, almost a pseudo achievement for. Um, the quest goal is, is something that really helps uh, reinforce the world building that is sort of passively happening at each quest. Every quest goer is always going to have their memories, but if they can see those memories pop up later on, and this isn't going to work for everybody, of course. Not everybody is going to have a chapel, uh, like a, a, a building where they can just put a pedestal in and bang a thing on. You know, not those things are always going to be happening, but... <clears throat> little memento, um, you know, if you're in a position where those things can happen, really um, make it interesting and help encourage uh, sort of passive out of out of your quest encounters. So say like the the thing sealed up, the the, the face, the, the, the face that we got off the creature, um, the, the, the thing is going to be in a box. And I'm going to have a little thing there saying the the brave goers of last festival ended this beast holy sigma bless them this day. And, uh, you know, somebody comes in who did that question. Oh, is that thing? Going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't touch it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And you play player, say, following them around or somebody just in the chapel at the same time goes, oh, that's pretty cool. And conversation then happens about it. And then you're sharing experiences and all that fun stuff um so those things are those things are good so just even if you even if you write in it and don't ever end up doing even the stories if you hear the stories later on you know you've done an all right job um outcomes so this is something really good that we that we should always do is set your win-lose conditions clearly um set them at the end because if you just flick your document right down to the bottom and go, aha, there it is. And that way, if somebody sees your document, you can flick it up and go, well, you saw nothing. I was just looking at stat blocks to get out of my house. So I don't know. Um, so, outcome eight. This outcome provides provides a two person chant that cuts the creature off from its wins. So the creature was a combination of, I think, about three wins, which gave it its stuff. Um, so it removes its perks. So you've debuffed the creature, um, uh, but the caster needs to be near the creature. It has a 60... It now, then you give its win-lose condition. So the creature is the only one that should know about its percentage of survival. And you will know as the quest giver if these are... The, if you have active mechanics, these or quests that then affect the, <clears throat> the creature in its final encounter... Um, these are things that the creature will be obviously briefed on 
before. So if you go, you know, you're past the, the person who's playing the creature or the person who's playing what's happening <clears throat> in between, uh, this is something that's going to, that they're going to, you know, just say, okay, the lich one. Oh, by the way, uh, they have both things. Um, so, uh, there's a good chance that you're going to have to give them a real good fight. Um, I've given you some extra stuff to help, I've given you some extra volunteers to help make the final battle fun. Yep. <laughs> um, so, uh, two-person chant. My thing was it had to consistently go. Uh, you know, I just, <clears throat> I was just like, you just need a mage to do a chant consistently through the fight. Should be a five, ten minute fight. Um, the the two, as long as somebody's doing a chant, I had it pre-written out, I'm fairly certain, and um, it was just a basic thing that I had a basic thing for that just needed to. Um, or we designated as well um, somebody to do a chant. So you, there is a degree where you have to do, where you have to be flexible with your structural things. Um, a, time constraints. B, you think it's going to work. Realistically, um, when you get there, in the moment, you go, now I'm looking at it, it isn't going to work as well. Uh, then, outcome B. Outcome B is this outcome provides an enchantment weapon that unbinds the creature, smiting it negative 3 HP per hit. If you're going to do stuff like that, make sure you post the video. Um, thankfully, mine could. 40% <laughs> chance to kill. Uh, chance to chance to kill, 40%. So this is actually lesser than outcome A. This was the um, church only. The winds was what the magic authority gave us. Um, they gave us the ability to cut it off with the winds. The chapel gave option B, which was the ability to be able to uh, smite the creature. Still had access to its to its perks, so it would then still be a tough fight. So this is where you add that give and take sort of stuff. Um, option C, which is A and B. Uh, if the players are able, they can use both A and B. Fight the creature, they will have a higher chance of killing it. Here's my mistake. Uh, night one, uh, we had a few people. Night two, people heard about it. For night two, people were signing up. And I mean signing up. We, I was like, oh my god, it exploded. Okay. Town was packed. I was like, la first night, I had like, maybe... Five, ten, between five and ten people. I was like, shit, okay. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one, two people. You know, I don't want to, it's one dude. I don't want to overburden them. Let's see how night one goes. Night one's great. People had fun. Uh, night two happened. The, the, the sign up for night two happened. And I was like, I need volunteers. Who the fuck wants to join? And thankfully, a bunch of people were like, yeah, man, we've done this shit before. Let's fucking go. What do you want us to do? What What are our perks? I'm like, you know what? Go nuts. Here's your hit points. Here's what you can do. You get a little bit of creature stuff as well because you're fucking cultists of the creature, let's say. And, um... Yeah. Yeah. I had... <sighs> which I'm completely cool with. Completely cool with. Um, you know, the, and stuff like that. If... Because we had, I actually have the book. I'm going to grab the book. I'm going to show you how many people actually signed up. I, they were just going in character names, so it's not like the dogs. Uh, oh, shit. Notes. Notes are important. Also, hire yourself a scribe. If you end up getting lots of paperwork and you're running shit, hire yourself a scribe. They are... They are worth all their copper and silver that I wasted. <laughs> that was not a waste, actually. I, I wouldn't have been able to keep up with the level of paperwork. So, um, uh, let me go to the page. Okay, so I had a lot more people night one than I thought. 
this is night one. So that's a good couple of people at night one for the mob quest. Now, you're always going to expect people, the, the people that sign up, those are the people that's going to come. Those are your expected numbers. The people that you're going to lose people, typically you're going to lose some people. People's lines, people's names that aren't crossed out, they're the people that didn't arrive, didn't rock up. Um, the, the, some people bring extra people. In the case where you only have one or two people fighting and helping, um, is when you are going to. Oh, what's the uh, is when you're gonna have to set limits. Sometimes you will have to turn people away if they bring their plus ones. You're gonna have to. Um, it's a safety thing, really. Um, and also, it's a public thing, too. If you're writing stuff, it's, you're going to want to make it a sink. Uh, a money sink, you, you know, you pay a cop up, and, you know, if the night goes well, you get the cop back. Simple. Last night, the, the last night was, was good, you know? Um, we had this many... This many people turn up and get paid. It's two pages. And the out of all those two pages, only two people didn't turn up. Only two people didn't turn up. And like, I was shit in my pants by the time we fucking we came to it. And we were like halfway talking through like middle of the day. We're just like, okay, the quest is going really well. They're doing really good. They're almost gotten to the second thing. You know, I made an extra road bump for them in it. Like there was a section, there was a bit in there where I was like, I mean, the brother law were talking. I sealed his letter. I was like, wouldn't it be really funny because, uh, how these things are being made and because of how, uh, the, the person who's making them is really paranoid about this sort of shit. Um, you know, wouldn't it be really funny if uh, he's booby trapped the wax? And, you know, we've gotten this letter in passing because a postmaster or somebody, whoever delivering it, you know, found it on a body or whatever, it somehow managed to make its way into the hands of someone. Um, the person then sold that letter because they recognized that it may have potential really good information on it. Um, whether that be, you know, this is stuff that doesn't need a story, doesn't need an explanation as to why. Somehow, this letter was recognized to being valuable, got put into the black market, and then got put up to sale. Your players have to get that, whether they get it from the sale, like the players had to get that, so whether they got it from the sale, whether they got it from uh, purchasing it after the sale, um, you know, tags on things on what people can and can do on quests, of course. Um, gives people guidelines on what they're expecting to happen. So if somebody drops a fuck ton of coin that weren't meant to get that letter, and it's a quest item, they can then go, oh, okay, you know, I, I already did my conversations about, you know, in case these scenarios were happening, maybe come to the church and I'll reimburse you, sort of deal, sort of thing, or at least partially reimburse you, sort of thing, or they'll get involved in the quest and be the one wielding the thing. Um, thankfully, my players, uh, my 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 players ended up getting the. Um, watch it call it. Um, watch my that was fine. It's fine. It's just kind of way. Um, uh, so, yeah, so these, uh, players got the, got the thing. They, um, uh, the, the, the road bump, the extra road bump that I put in to sort of slow them down because they were just fucking just smashing the quest was because the letter was booby trapped. Uh, Blue green dust everywhere. That's real strange. I feel like I've heard something about this before. Just wait a moment there, guys. Suddenly a few people in the in the in the church were like Bye, see ya. We'll talk to you later. See ya guys. And uh, I was like, oh no, no, just wait, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go to go double check something. So I went across the metric authority and said, you know, this letter is just 
just blowing this weird, strange dust everywhere. It's it's real strange. You guys know what this is? And they're like, in the church, you say. Who else? I'm like, ah, oh, nah, it's fine. It, it's it's it must be nothing then. You're not taking it seriously, whatever. And so I walk, waving the letter through the street back into the, um, into the church. Thankfully, the church and the magic authority at Quest is pretty close. At Bellarat Quest is pretty close. Um, so that resulted in my death and my scribe's death because I was an NPC. I respawned back in my thing, and I went to show the scribe how to do all the, um, the stuff with the great bag because this was their first quest. Um. So the road bump was, I died, I lost half an hour of memory, which was getting the letter, the the mage, uh, the magic authority took the letter because it had a magic green powder on it, which was stone. Um, and, you know, as an extra road bump, they had to figure out where it was, and they ended up getting, very last minute, they got somebody to divine where it was, and like, it's here! And it turns out that one of the magisters actually decided to play a joke on Sebastian and dump the letter in the uh, in the magic authority. I was like, "Oh, you fuck!" In um Sebastian's um uh like uh office tent thing at Ballarat Quest, I was like, "That's fucking gold. You have to steal that back, though, dude." <laughs> so anyway, um, but yeah, uh, so these are those are like fun little things that people remember, you know, there's, there's encounters and things like that in there, um. But uh, how the night ended up going is that we lost. The players succeeded in unbinding and smiting the creature. But um, because we got overwhelmed by the cultists. And this is stuff that we then changed on the, on the day. Like on the fly. Because we got so many people signing up. And I was like, I know I've got volunteers. I reckon I probably can snag some more. Let's just give them power to do fucking whatever. The veteran LARPers, fuck it, let's do it. Um... Uh, yeah, and that turned out really well. Oh, man, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that people that put their hand up and said, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Oh, yeah. it scarred a lot of people, more some than others, but anyway. <laughs> um, you know, my, my character was fighting as well. Um... Uh, the pe the questers got to wield the hammer with the enchantment and the um the with the you know the, with the enchanted hammer which smites the creature and the enchantment was going but the mages had to be kept alive so there's an extra mechanic I was throwing in was like I thought oh, you know I've not had that many extra volunteers like you know there's a lot of people here um if the chant goes down ups and doodles. And then they started turning people, turning people in the moment. We had to flee the town. The creature was smited, but the cultists left with the creature. So that's repercussions for later on. So you know these are things that we can then you know work on and and add to for later quests and write on to more things and do. So main takeaways is make sure you have all your outcomes done. Make sure you are flexible in um, adapting to uh, the level of uh, um, confirmed interest you get in it. Um, now make sure that the mechanics allow for uh, um, safety. Uh, have clear ideas about how you're going to um, <clears throat> control the encounter um, obviously yourself being present or having somebody who is across that event that encounter being present that can step in and say it's dead you don't need to keep beating it guys um or oh shit it's escaped or maybe it might come back tomorrow night um hadn't seen it throughout the day uh um you know just just essentially NPC guides it to set to just a little and then, oh there's a new quest you've done it you brave heroes or we've lost the town to the cultists fuck shit guys that's bad also I potentially bled out there maybe um 
Yeah, mostly. Mostly we had to get a mage anyway. Um, um, yeah, so... Um, and then being consistent in the um, in those changes um, and what sort of things that follow on from it. You know, if, if the players win, you know, you know, have maybe pay your town crier to, to say, oh, all is well in town. The thing that haunts the night has been smited, but also we now have a cult problem, but all is well in town. Um, you know, and that's something that, you know, may pop up in X Pillar quest. It's something that may pop up in two quests time, three quests, you know. It's stuff that you can always draw back from. You know, people don't forget the quests that they've been involved in. They look forward to quests that they had fun in and a lot of the time they want to see the people who gave those quests um especially if they had fun in it more of those sorts of things uh, more things from um so that's always something to think about um yeah safety uh definitely thinking about mechanics if you need to brief the players on what is going on controlling uh, the chatter during those briefs is really important. Um, I can experience your hospitality and tourism and all that sort of stuff, shouting at people to shut the fuck up and listen and stuff like that is fairly easy, but not everybody's going to be able to do that. You know, reach out, ask people to help. You know, your organizer is always going to raise their hand and be like, yeah, oh, not organizer, but your, that came out wrong. Your organizers are going to be the people that you, sh you should be able to lean on. Um, uh, whether that be other guild members, um, I'm specifically talking like Ballarat stuff, um, or, uh, you know, positions of authority that can help wrangle people in. And even sometimes there's people going to be in the crowd that can, or, you know, people within your own warband that will help you say, oh, all right, here's the, what's going on, you know, if you don't sort of have that capability or something. Else. You know, there's, there's always things and ways that you can help manage and control things. Um, and again, to touch on safety is uh, something that I should have really thought about and learned, uh, should have thought about um, on the night is um, what are the potential risks for where you are doing your um, encounters. So as was a night combat encounter. So we had lights. Um, we had lights that worked. We had sections which were slightly dark, um, which gave a bit of a spook aesthetic. Um, obviously I forewarned the guilds that people may be coming in out of your tents, uh, out of the guild rooms, you know, these are the people that will be doing it, um, I stated it fairly clear that nobody else can, um, and, uh, telling, and when a, say, a cultist died, they didn't necessarily, they didn't regen, so they had to be dragged, they got dragged back to the chapel, so again, it was giving them respite, um, some times the cultists regen oh no magic um but you know letting letting the people that you have say okay cool let's let's give them some you know eight of giving them that an extra out to take a breather and then i'm also I'm, you know i'm providing them a space to take an extra breather um you know cultists were just piling up in the back of the church but um more kept coming <laughs> um like you know and I'm rambling a little bit, but yeah, the, you know, safety is the main thing that you should be thinking about. Um, and if you're adding things like a regen, or if you're adding um, passive mechanics that uh, let people come back after a certain amount of time, um, uh, talk about with your volunteers about how um, you sort of want that to happen. Um, I was just like, just wait a second. I just write down a little bit and just slowly get up and fuck off into a building or uh, walk around and then jump into the fray again. Um, you know, little things. Um, pretend to be innocent, yeah, and then stab somebody in the back. I actually still like got a lot of fucking people. I was trying to heal the. I was trying to heal the um the. The dude doing the um the chant from my one and um uh the truth seer actually was that they got to do it like you you brought me the truth seer to to do the the very special magic boy chant and they're like yep and I'm like 
Fucking all right, awesome. Sweet as. We've got the shy East Magister fucking doing it cool. <laughs> Been made mad by, you know, red magic, but fire magic. But sweet as. Let's hope he doesn't burn us. He turned to chaos. Turned to chaos. He got, he got chaos. And then he got... Anyway, that's, that's like... And then... And play... Yeah, that's... that's the players make their own canon with these sorts of things. Um, uh, from the, obviously, the, back to the very start, the information that's being fed to them, the, the shades that they're painting on their own personal uh, character knowledge. Um, you know, fucking man, there was like demons possessing people and shit. Cool. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. That's how you start rooms. You know, you roll with it. And if that comes up, Later on down the track, and you, the quest giver, have to deal with those repercussions, like explaining what the fuck actually happened in a court. Cool. Just means people get just more word of mouth, more people have to, you know, more people know about it. Um, everything is a potentially going to, everything potentially spurring from whatever you make comes off, will come as a positive or, a, or in a situation where it will then make. I have some more things. My last thing is um research research your setting research what um obviously your state where you're from is back to your character back at the start again um and there's really good resources all over the internet which you can get your hands on um in digital form these are typically stuff that come in um you know <sighs> non-digital format but you can get pdfs of it you can buy from the source if it is still in uh, print um stuff from the warhammer fantasy stuff like the role the rp good sources of information um the thing with warhammer uh lore is that not everybody is going to be a reliable narrator not everything is going to be um, 100% set in stone is how it is. Um, you know, you've got your first, second, third, fourth edition of Warhammer Fantasy. So, um, if you're citing Tease from, like, a first edition that is, um, a couple of lines, uh, I would say still kind of use it. But think back to how, like, that kind of stuff is. Um, I wouldn't make a character based off that two-line piece from a first edition. I would... Uh, I would probably use it as maybe, like, a... Maybe as something that may be a, an, accompany, an accompaniment um, to that. But it would be something that you would... Uh, definitely... Definitely take with a pinch of salt. Um, there's some stuff that we get that my warband gets because we're Sigmarites. Um, you know, there's a thing that happened in the Wizard Wars, uh, when the, in, in the that big Wizard War, which essentially gun dwarves were like, I see you lose an empire, here's a gun that kill wizards, and then the empire won. So there was wizards that were defected through the empire rather than fighting with the wizards that were fighting against the empire. And so, to identify themselves on the field, and this is just little bits of lore that we just found, just an obviously an image. Um, and then I found a couple of things that reinforced it. So you find something cool, you find something to accompany it um, within other sources, obviously, source of research. Uh, I am an enemy, I am your friend. That's how Wizards of Sigma during the Wizard War, identified themselves in the Empire. Twin Tail Comet, you're my... I, I'm an ally. Backwards. I'm not your friend. You're going to get fucked up. Sort of thing. So, I thought it was kind of cool. So, uh... <laughs> um, Tome of Salvation is really good for the people who are religious inclined. It's really good for doing stuff where you are wanting to take snippets for from religious powers 
find out about how cultures, how um, uh, different cultures and different um, sects run and how they act within the Warhammer universe. It has quite a lot of fluff. Treat it like your DMG. Uh, look for a section, have a read. It's not in there. Look for a section that that first section's potentially cited and then treat it like your Wikipedia link hopper. Um, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay PDF is just such a wealth of resources. It gives you a good idea of what, um, uh, of what the sort of level that heroes, uh, would be at in Warhammer. These potentially will be close to what your characters will be um, uh, if you are making them as the adventurer sort. The jack of all trades, master of none um, sort of deal. The you know the 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 hero. You know you you, you when you when you're making a character when you when you're thinking about where you're coming from, uh, writing a quest and things like that. You've got to treat your negatives as positives, as as opportunities to, uh, like not knowing how to read is a good one. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> no. You know. Your negatives, again, yeah, they're positive. That's what you want. Um, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love it. Um, uh, on D&D, d, &D. d is a fantastic resource to actually sort of help step you into, um, uh, yeah, in-person roleplay. Hmm. Physically in-person. It's all, it's all, um, adjusting yourself to, um, Levels of improvisation. In improv. And my words aren't working. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, quest. Big quest. Week long quest. Have you have have a day? Everybody says it. Nobody listens to it. I didn't listen to it. My first big quest. Have a day. This is going into now quest talk. But have a day for yourself. Have a day where you just. If you need a nervous breakdown cry in your tent because character bleed hit too hard, fucking go for it. You need if you need a nap, take that fucking nap. Have a cry, have a nap. Have something to eat, drink some water, chill out, maybe even have a quiet day cleaning up the camp with a few people. It all it's all something to help sort of take the the help help soften uh the the emotion. Uh, of the stakes of the situation because the quest can become pretty serious and you know uh, things where it's high stakes can feel real real high stakes like it's a get you know oh you're breaking my immersion Come on. it's the the immersion is is the event itself you're gonna you're gonna be fairly immersed in the event unless somebody's doing burnouts in their fucking Toyota Corolla in the car park you it's not much is really going to be tearing you away during the version. Sure, you may walk from a medieval tent town into a, 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 a 
a tavern with a fucking microwave in it. But you know what? You'll pull out the Visa card at some point. Yeah. You'll pull out the Visa card at some point, guys. Um, but yeah. Um, the immersion can get pretty real. It can get um, pretty intense. Um, and it's about uh, quest is a good one. The middle of quest is the perfect time just to take that day for yourself. Um, so yeah, the, the, the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Rulebook a really good resource um, for helping you understand what sort of I've been talking about in here, but also help you sort of understand what uh, top level adventurers sort of have to deal with and the dangers because this the, the, the roleplay game the, the sort of like the DDS game is actually really good for describing you know these are all in character letters like here and you know that's that's a lot of shit right there like um that's great to read about you know again think about the time period that this stuff is happening and some of the stuff that they're talking about may not specifically be in your um, time period, but again, that's that's fine. And you know, this also gives um, good information about uh, sort of the 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 stereotype of what other people will be seeing your race or your profession as. Nuance is real, and we um uh, sometimes forget that. Um, yeah. So, just because you're a dwarf doesn't mean you're a blacksmith. You could be a dwarf who is a, uh, jeweler, but also, um, uh, has a fond love of... Sobriety. There we go. That's a character, I think. That's a really... Bad analogy, Henry. Um, it's getting late. Uh, another good resource. Oh my fucking god! I have any. I uh, that's 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 perfect VR time. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, another one. This is hands down. This is the best one. To, if you're struggling to figure out what the fuck type of character you want, this has 258 pages of jobs, of just what standard people would be. If Master is in there, maybe straight away. Though. Master is stuff that you could probably earn an opportunity to, to get to at a quest, or at, not a quest, at quests. Um, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a witch hunter, every witch hunter had to be an initiate at some point. Um, uh, you know, not everybody was a uh, warrior priest straight off the bat. Which I would love to be, uh, but not everybody was. Um, but you know, there, there, you know, some quests will have options for you and for that to be facilitated to get to those situations. It's about talking to people and seeing what's going on at the end of the day. But this is really good to um, sort of find a good idea or um, how you could play a character how you could then twist this sort of stuff and, um, you know, uh, run from that with there, but, you know, from there. Um, it's got a lot of careers and there is, you know, some really good, you know, uh, fluff text in here. The career compendium is a fucking gold mine. Um, if you are writing um, RPs for online, the this one is an unofficial uh, rule expansion for fantasy, which accompanies this super huge map. In fact, the download for this is on this page somewhere. Um, yeah, on this page somewhere there is the the travel distancing. I have a copy of it if you have trouble finding it. In the, uh, in the page. People watching at home sort of after boys and girls. Um, and then the days. Uh, oh, it's so good. It's so fucking good. 
I was I was tempted just to be like, yeah. So uh, when do we change the war. Here's a fun fact. <laughs> fun thing about flagellants, they're actually not seen as a bad thing in towns. They're... Yeah. Yeah, they're like, oh, we've got a couple of flagellants. And might last a little bit longer than we thought then. It's a sign that we're growing nice and wealthy. Couple of flagellants in town means your town's healthy. <laughs> means you've got enough people there to go. Cool. So, um, uh, uh, a manic breakdown nihilism. I'm gonna harm myself for religion. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess town's doing great then. Um, yeah, if people can become a flagellant. Your town's doing great. Um, yeah. So this actually has. Physical mile distance um, for all your folk out there writing stuff, um, seeing how far these are in real life, um, and how much distance you know you would take, um, gives you a fairly decent idea on you know writing a thing. Oh, we walked from Kriegstor to Sudenberg, and you know it took three days, where it may in fact take you know. Uh, a day and a half to get the Sudenberg instead of from Kriegstor. You know, um, you can use comparisons here and there. Um, I do recall there is a map floating around of um this with all the actual stuff on there. Um, obviously it's unofficial. It's not actually a part of this resource here. It is somewhere around there, <clears throat> and it worked out to be. I think I calculated vaguely. I think it was around about a, an evening or a day to get to um, Craig's door. But if you're walking, you're going to be taking breaks and things like that. So you're adding about an hour on top of whatever you're doing um, per X kilometers, say. Because Google Maps will always make think that you're walking day and night. So you're probably always doubling the amount of this time that you're traveling uh, for you people writing stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so we did, I did a big cockerel, um, pilgrimage for our woman and stuff like that. Um, this is a image, uh, off of this, and it took me ages to do, because that was a little big fun about everything else, but it is not done in a vector map, so it loses, it is completely, uh, scuffed now. Um, so yeah, we, I did a big thing. You know, helping, uh, you know, more resources you can have for yourself, the better. <clears throat> um, even if you're making stuff and then you never use it again, I've never used this at all. I've given it an eye, I, I plotted it out and I thought, yep, that's probably a way that the warband and stuff like that went. Uh, the, like, you know, the, the, the stuff that made the warband come down to here. Um, yep, that sounds about right. Um, you know, you can see that, in fact, you know, they... The, the thing went through a different path instead of going the safe way and blah 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 and all that stuff yada 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 um uh life of sigma is a good one to anyone who wants to know about um sort of essentially creation of the empire that is really um good to know especially if you're playing religious even if you're not um going to be a sigmarite um, this talk, this one has stuff about, um, Uruk, um, and the Al Uruk, uh, the, um, because Sigma was in fact, um, a follower of Uruk, um, and he was, uh, um, prophesized by the Al Uruk to be, uh, the one to take sort of Uruk's sort of throne in the pantheon of gods so again not one of the uh, not not one religion many uh sigmarites again are just the most enthusiastic about it and again the tome of salvation will have stuff about how you know each religion and their followers and their 
worshippers and the servants of that religion are how they act, um, how they stereotypically act, how they uh, take up their roles, what sub-factions are in those roles, and you can then have a look at other stuff, like 1D4 Chain is a really good resource, take it with a grain of fucking salt though, because it's the most detailed, but it's also the most memed. It's called 1D4 Chain for a reason. Um, but that's the most detailed one. That is currently down at the moment as we speak. Um, yeah. That's essentially my TED Talk. No. TLDR. Think about where you're from. When were you born? Look at your timeline. Think about when your parents had experienced events. That generational knowledge. Uh, pick and choose your uh, what parts of that knowledge you know. We want to make uh, generational knowledge more rumoured, more uh, question marky. Um, I knew this happened, but I can't remember what they said about what place or where that was. Or think of it as like, uh, again, uh, I know stuff about the Boer War in real life. I don't know. I can't remember where the Boer War was for. Um, and I know that it had impacts when transitioning over World War One. Could I tell you every battle in World War One? No. No, World War One happened in Europe. I know it happened a lot of places. But could I tell you everywhere? No. So that's the generation. And then there's the knowledge that you would know when your character's growing up. And that stuff, again, is still going to be you pick and choose events. You pick and choose stuff that you remember. You weigh the significance by further reading and re further reading what happens. Don't write page bios. If you're reading it and you forget stuff in real life, that's probably a good measure of how you want your character or how you want um, uh, NPCs and stuff like that to have knowledge of things. Um, that's a good way to also then add. Don't write yourself up and recite a character bio. Um, have colloquial knowledge um, as best. Pick and choose what you are meant to know and what stuff you are going to purposely withhold. Um, you know, Margarita of Marienburg was elect, was crowned emperor, was elected empress. Grand Theogenes said no, and then we broke out into a civil war. I think the midden lander dude is the, is the, is the now the emperor, but I'm not sure. I know something's going on with Sylvania. Those dicks have been doing shit for ages. Because I'm lost. But, I keep hearing that there was a siege at one point. Now, I've been in the border prince for a good couple of years now. I just, hmm, really hope they're doing all right back in Ostermark. Um, you know, being a being a person of the empire, um, who's in the border princes again, we're very far away. Won't know about everything that's going on in the world. Um. So you've got pick and choosing information, your know, societal knowledge as well, socioeconomic economic knowledge. You know, what does your class uh, afford you? What level of information does your class afford you? Um, uh, you know, you would not know what scape part. You would not know what the Avengers level threat of things would be. Um, Pre-existing um, events and things happening with holding. Um, quests are a good measure to um, add knowledge to your character um, uh, but still treat most things uh, that you're told as like the, the, the two beers in Barstool shit talk you take everything with a grain of salt um, current year in Swordcraft is our current world 
2022. Um, that changes every year. At time recording. Um, and yeah, that's essentially it. Think about your characters. Think about when when and if you go to write quests. Um, uh, think about colloquial knowledge, socioeconomic uh, what level of information that affords you, the layers of stuff, what you do and do not know about as that character, um, starting off with a job, if you really don't know, it's a perfect place to start, there's heaps of resources that you can get your hands on without having to pay a cent, always support the official release, um, and read, 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 read any information information and source you can get your hands on um the wikis are there for a reason uh people spent hours and years on just creating and collating um information for you to get your hands on like this is this this massive map right here is is a a, a passion project by somebody like this is a wealth of information just in itself like um, you know, gives you a real good idea, helps you sort of, you know, help ground your character from where they were from. And then, if you were in the Empire and then moved to the Border Princes, how, why, those are the details that you should be not writing down, but in fact, maybe even just thinking about. Again, you don't want to be writing these massive character bios. If that works for you and you can help strip out that meta of that sort of stuff and, and, um, help relate that, that's um, yeah, everybody in Warhammer typically will have a religion. Um, everyone in Warhammer will typically have a religion. Yeah, and nay, it's, you know, your, your fantasy companions and everything like that. Twist, turn, Sawcraft is adapting Warhammer Fantasy to meet, to fit its lot, to fit its, its events, its, its everyday thing. You know, we are twisting it in a way where it can be used. It's an abridged sort of deal. It's not playing at any of the events. We're our own separate little thing, but we are still using it as a baseline. So, yeah. This has been my TED Talk rant. Thank you for sitting through this. Um, I've really appreciated uh, your input where you've made it. Try to catch us in the world. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you're watching at home and watching the VODs, thank you for sitting through this three-hour-long ramble. I hope you got some information out of it. I have... Uh, I can I can link you to the resources available. Um, again, if you can buy the PDFs, if they're still in production, buy them. Um, if can't there's definitely means to get your hands on stuff um but yeah please always support official release and um yeah just hit people up and have a chat um if you're confused about anything or if you want citation on stuff um you know i have a page there's a meme page hit me up on that um yeah you know it's a it's a it's a long vid um, thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah, links again from Rome down in the description.